All right, let's let's get into to one more. Um, <laughs> I love this one. Time one. Uh, this is the oh we didn't I skipped over that one, um, but I feel like we kind of we kind of covered uh, we kind of covered it in a separate conversation. Yeah. Uh, you said uh, step one: be transparent with parents about playing time and where you see their kid fitting into your team. It then becomes the parent's decision to stay or leave. Uh, step two, never discuss playing time again with parents. It will only be discussed if a player has questions. I love, I love those two points. Um, but can you kind of elaborate why you wrote those two points? Um, because isn't any like the number one reason why people are usually unhappy in any situation there are is my kid's not playing or they're not playing enough or they should be playing all the time, every inning, every single day. And it's like, I just think as a coach, it's your responsibility to be as transparent as you can with these people as soon as they join your team and not to just woo them and say oh your kid's gonna play all the time that they don't now we have problems right just to get them there um i just kevin who runs our team i just have admired him so much for that because in college that's what happens like you don't see you know it's a coach to player conversation and not saying that it's the same because these girls are young but that is when it is the parent's decision at the very beginning, before you join our team, your daughter is going to be the third catcher. She's going to catch a few innings a weekend. She will hit this much. Now there's always time to earn more if your daughter's killing it and she's hitting 500 on the weekend. I'm not going to pull her out of the lineup, but to understand the rotation of where she sits in with the starting nine, this is where it is. So it now becomes the, the parent's decision whether they want to stay and have that or if they want to go somewhere else, well, she might get more. So that if you decide to stay, you no longer have the right to complain about how much your kid is playing, in my opinion, unless someone's being treated unfairly and they're going against what they said in the beginning. Different. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way that we run things is like our coach does not discuss playing time. It does not take phone calls about playing time. If a kid has a question about playing time, they are more than welcome to ask questions and to ask, what can I do to ask why, like giving them sort of that power instead of it being mom or dad always calling these, you know, coaches about it. But I don't think if you're honest and transparent about it at the beginning, then that's going to ever be a standard of you can't call me. Well, you lied. So yes, I can. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I love, um, go ahead. Sorry. It's just one, be honest. And then it seems like things just become a little bit easier. Totally. But. I love, uh, how the onus is also on the player to communicate. It's very difficult and, and hard uh, for players to have those types of conversations, but that lesson is so incredibly important. Even if it's like a completely botched conversation the first time around, like you learn so much just having that dialogue uh, with your coach. Right. But also them, they should, a lot of the reason why they don't is because they don't feel safe to. You don't feel safe to approach your a teenage girl's not going to do that, mm -hmm. you know. Or if they think they don't have their best interest at heart, or they think they're going to use it against them in any way, I'm not talking to my coach, right? So it's like it goes both ways. Of you have to be, the coach has to be approachable, and the coach has to be kind, and all of those things. When a teenage girl does bring up the courage to ask you about those hard questions. It's not safe. They're not going to want to. Absolutely. 